Can you try? Should I say something? Oh, perfect. Okay, yeah. Uh, you can. Uh, well. Everything is working up, yeah. yeah. Hello. Hola, bienvenidos, welcome to our new guest, the lecture today with uh, See if I say it well. Mark van Wageningen. No, it's very fun. <laughs> uh, as you probably know, he is like the ambassador of multicolor type. Uh, I guess that the lecture today is going to be been very interesting to see how Mark has been pushing or breaking the boundaries, introducing color in a traditional uh, discipline who has been very tied to, to white, tied to black, sorry, let's say. And also at the same time, he's breaking these rules, but also using from the learn from the tradition of, of traditional ways of printing and these methods. Um, just one thing to ask you: it would be super nice if you come co closer some more. You, I think it would be much nicer for for Mark. I think he is going to be. Uh, it doesn't look very nice when you're slide. Yeah, exactly. Come on. Move some of you, please, to the to the first rows. You will see better the screen also. The letters are bigger, and the bigger, the better. You know, it's like, come on, it's, this is here like the, the, the mosh pit of typography. <laughs> you can come first row to you. Don't be afraid, come on. Don't be afraid, exactly. <laughs> Also, Mark, you've seen he has been so nice. He brought like a specimen for each one of you. And I think that now you're okay. Thank you for moving and thank we you. start and thank you, Mark, for coming. Okay. So we're all ready? Okay, so um, I will do this. Yes, let's start. So, many thanks, Mark, for the introduction. Many thanks for inviting me. And this is actually my first time in Barcelona. And I am really enjoy it here. And it's a true honor to be here. So, you have already made seen this talk will be about uh, color and typography. And um, can I just push it right? Um, there's also a little extension, sorry, um, um, disclaimer here. And there's an extension already of this. Um, this will probably be the most nerdiest talk you will ever experience. And um, it will be, I think so, in a way. So, um, please, I have over more than 200 slides. This possible. So um, I will start with a small uh, introduction about my uh, studio. Uh, I work under the name of Novo Tipo, and one of the reasons why I work under the name of Novo Tipo is that, uh, as Mark already a little bit explained, um, my name is Mark van Wageningen, and it's a very, very Dutch name. 
And it's, it's like if you already cross the Belgian border, it's like very hard to pronounce it properly. So with all due respect to Mark, uh, Novo Tipo just sounds better. In my opinion. Uh, the other reason why I work on the name of Novo Tipo is that I really enjoy <laughs> and I like to collaborate with lots of people. So uh, you may hold me responsible for everything you see, but I never achieved it, and I never could achieve this, uh, what you will see from the next coming project, all by myself. So uh, normally I always start every presentation with saying thank you to all the uh, students, all the interns, all the printers, and all the you know, front-end developers, uh, color specialists, who collaborated with me for the past few Okay, thank you. thank you so much. So we did this. So what do we do with um, as Novo Tipo? Uh, we design prototypes. Uh, we make typefaces. We run a small type foundry. And most of uh, one, one of the most important things is that we are graphic designers. And um, I am basically I'm educated as a graphic designer, and I did my master uh, uh, type design only a couple of years ago before. However, everything we do is in uh, full color, and that's quite an important thing to say. So what do we do is uh, we publish books, um, we write articles, and we do uh, workshops. And especially, especially workshops I'm really enjoying because it's, um, I like to share ideas. The reason why I'm here is that I like to uh, share ideas with you about uh, color and type and possible uh, yeah, new ways of um, executing uh, uh, graphic design and new ways of communicating with typography. So um, I'm always open for um, new ideas and sharing ideas and sharing thoughts because it's also uh, it sharpen uh, my ideas and my thoughts. So however, everything is in uh, full color. So in a way, you can say that our world, my world, is not bigger than 26 characters. And of course, I know there are some extras like dots, commas, numbers, and things like that. But basically, that's it for me. And uh, another thing, as you can already speak about a, uh, it's not a design philosophy, you know, it's, it just really sounds uh, pretentious. I am, uh, but it's like a design approach uh, during our, uh, while we are designing, we are very open for uh, happy mistakes, little accidents. It really, it's, it's, we think that it's interesting. And, uh, you know, we take ourselves, uh, sorry, we take our jobs and our work very seriously because everything should be correct and good, but we try not to take ourselves very seriously. So, in a way, you can say that we have a professional approach to amateurism. That's another part of our uh, design approach. Because we really think that perfection is nice, but um, perfection is slick, so, and slick can easily be boring. And in a way, you can say that our work, my work, you know, it's, it's like a tribute to failure. And well, to make a long story short, I just like it when there is something wrong. Like, it's more interesting, you know, if you meet someone and you think like, hmm, there's something wrong with that person, you know, then it makes it more interesting. And it's the same with designing typefaces or anything like that. And in a way, you can say that we are always in search of the perfect Imperfection. So that's more or less basic in uh, um, within our design approach. And I found that uh, perfect imperfection. I think you know, uh, I printed this poster five years ago, and if you have a proper look at this poster, you can say like everything is wrong with it. You know, it's like if you check this, like spacing, it's it's really bad. You know, the N and E. It's, and if you check out modernism, it's modernism. And the, uh, the serifs of the H, they are almost like connected. Well, spacing of the wood, it's, it's really bad. 
And I think that the S is also flipped. And um, not and check the rough edges, which is particular, which is special for letterpress. And I thought like, okay, when everything is wrong, um, why do I like it so much? So when everything is wrong, wrong can be right, in my opinion. Yeah, you're still with me. Yeah. <laughs> so this this is like complete common sense and logical uh, for me. And um, another thing, uh, which is at that time in our studio, um, we were thinking about that I heard a very high profile type designer uh, stating your conference in Berlin. And I heard him saying like traditionally, and I will not, I will, I will not mention his or her name, but I heard stating like uh, traditionally type designers think in black and white. Okay, because you know, at that time, I was already experimenting with uh, typefaces, multicolor typefaces, doing a lot of uh, experiments with color and type, and I thought, like, really, I, I, you know, it's like you can say that, but you know, how can I trust this? You know, so this was really like first step of my research project. And uh, I also was interested in um, putting my own work, you know, these experiments, more or less put it in, embed it in a more uh, historical context. And um, another thing, um, we're, we will start in a minute. Another thing uh, which is quite important is that uh, I discussed the possibility of designing and writing a book um, about color and type with my publisher in Germany, in Mainz. And we discussed like, okay, what, how, what will be the structure of the book and what uh, subjects do we do? And however you say like, what, whatever you do, if it's a presentation or a book, never ever start with Gutenberg. You know, it's like, it's, it's incredibly boring and uh, you know, people will leave or will fall asleep or will leave and go to the bar or they will put the book away, you know, and they will, you know, anyway you will lose them. So I will start this presentation, not with Gutenberg, but with two contemporaries and former associates of Gutenberg, uh, Johan Fust and Peter Schoeffer, who printed just a couple of years after Gutenberg printed his famous 42-line Bible in Mainz, they printed this beautiful Psalter book. And when I saw this, it's like, you know, there's color everywhere. And it's like, can you get more traditional than this? You know, and this is like printed. And you know, obviously they tried to imitate the handwritten manuscripts. You, this was really the beginning of print. And, um, but this is printed and they used like red for uh, uh, rubrication, it's like the Latin word red, rubar, rubrication. But if you take this beautiful book and uh, a step further, there's, there's already like a very beautiful multicolored uppercase D in it. And I thought like, oh, this is quite something because this is very traditional. This is multicolor. And they, uh, there's on display in the museum in Mainz, the Gutenberg Museum in Mainz, you can actually see the forms of um, um, the, uh, the lead type. They are replicas. You can see the, the form of the red lights. And they, it's a little bit the same system as a jigsaw puzzle. They just put it in the mold. And they ink, it, sorry, they ink it first. They put it back in the mold. And they just uh, do it in one print run. And I thought this is quite interesting, you know, nice little uh, decoration parts and but um, very uh, nice. And however, they stopped um, with using this technique because it was too labor intensive and too time consuming. But it's I think it's it's really amazing. So um, in a way, this part of the presentation is that I want to convince you that the statement uh, traditionally type designers think in black and white. It's like nonsense. Yeah. So, we will go to the beginning of the 19th century, and these are uh, the heydays of 
multicolor topography. And uh, what I like about these examples is that it's really beautiful um, color combinations and beautiful uh, designed uh, and, uh, uh, combinations. So I will go to this from Harold and Sons. This is again my one of my favorites. So I showed you already that I like uh, letterpress very much, and uh, I, showed, I explained to you that I like you know happy mistakes or little accidents very much. And this is why this is one of my favorites. You know, check out the spacing of how often you know. It's I think it's very, very cool. And it's, it's again, it's, a, it's a, an imperfect uh, perfection. It's a beautiful mistake. So um, these are examples of historical uh, uh, multicolored. They are quite popular <coughs> on Pinterest. I think you may know them. Eh? Really make great friends. Again, beautiful color combinations. Very decorational, uh, flourishing, things like that. I kind of like it. It's 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 nice. It's and it's very uh, and showing all these uh, examples makes you think about how did they use these kind of because sometimes uh, when I did my research, I sometimes I had the idea like it's only. Um, could only find examples of them, uh, you know, displayed in the type specimen itself. I never saw them in use, and this was in uh, something different because this is Anne Glazier uh, from a, a shop window painter in uh, Paris, and these one, these one are uh, used for the um, uh, it's as a style sheet for. Uh, Shop windows, and I think this is quite interesting, quite beautiful colored example. And what all these examples have in common is that they are all have a very uh, decorative approach. And I think that multicolored typography can go into two different uh, directions. One is the decorative approach. Or less like the construction approach. And I was already playing with that uh, construction approach, and then I saw uh, this is again all decorational. You know, this is typically you see a lot of flourishing, you know, beautiful floral elements, but also a lot of inlines, outlines, and shadows, and things like that. That's really uh, decorational. What is happening here with uh, Cassandre, and you know, um, this could be uh, a very good friend of mine. And um, what is happening here is that there's uh, really something else, you know, because what he is doing is that he is uh, the basic shapes of every character, he, um, he divides them into two different uh, layers, and that's quite a different approach than if you can um, uh, compare it with the decorational approach. Yes? Like you want to I almost feel like I'm lecturing here. Mm -hmm. So again, this is like, I think this is a very interesting example of uh, dividing um, uh, uh, the basic shapes of a character over a different layer. So, okay. I hope you, that you're all convinced now that this original statement of uh, type designers traditionally thinking it's nonsense, you know. Open your mind, I would say. So, uh, back to January 2015 to the Grafisch Werkcentrum in Amsterdam. It's a lovely place with all beautiful letterpress, uh, letter book presses, uh, letterpress possibilities. And, uh, well, I printed this poster there, and then I thought, like, okay, this is quite interesting. I like letterpress very much because it has really all these uh, happy little mistakes and little accidents. And um, so 
So I thought, like, would it be possible to um, uh, make a typeface which is more or less like connects those two approaches, like and multicolor and letterpress. So this was the start of <coughs> the Typewood project because I thought, like, yeah, this is um, you know, if you type designers think in black and white anymore, don't think in black and white anymore, but. <laughs> why, you know, Hollywood doesn't produce any black and white movies anymore, so I will start type wood. It's wood type, you know, it will be wood type, type wood, and I thought like, yeah, you know, the, the, the world is in full color, the web is in full color, I will do uh, type wood. So I started uh, these sketches and trying to design a typeface, which is obviously designed on a, um, on a computer, so you can really see, like, this is so typically uh, Bezier curves, and really typically designed on, uh, like, an illustrator or in glyphs or some other uh, um, design app. And I was trying to, uh, and I was at that time, it was really before I did my research on uh, Cassandre and Bifour, I was also trying to cut down. Uh, letters in uh, different parts. I did something like that. And I was really very happy with um, what is happening when I was overlapping different color parts of a letter. And then I thought like, okay, if I really want to understand what I am doing, what I'm trying to do with different color parts and different letters, I will transform this concept to uh, letterpress and so that I can actually hold uh, the letters uh, as physical objects in my hand. I thought that, that you know, th this gives me some insights about what I am uh, doing. So I thought, yeah, yeah this is, you know, I kind of like this. Uh, so I started with the transformation of digital files, you know, just from uh, my computer, um, trying to uh, transform this, translate this into wood. And I went to a Fab Lab, uh, and this is a nice workshop where they have all these uh, interesting machines like a laser cutter, a CNC uh, router, uh, 3D printers. And I did my first experiments on a CNC. Then I thought, like, mm, this is quite nice. But um, I was also a little bit like, yeah, this is nice, but it's also a bit too nice. You know, because it's like, uh, there was, it was so sharp when I made some testing prints, there was no reason for me to step away from my computer because I wasn't looking for perfection. I, wasn't, I was looking for imperfection. I was trying to find the perfect imperfection. So this uh, experiment, experiment totally uh, failed. I want to show this because uh, I make a lot of mistakes. And, uh, bad experiments. So um, I... Um, went to another machine and I did some testing with different uh, types of wood. So I went to the, just to the local wood shop around the corner at our studio and I did some testing with uh, different types of wood. And this is a quite an interesting slide because this is like, oh, now we're getting somewhere. This is really something. And, then I and this is the most important slide of the whole evening. Almost like if you see like this, you know, this little hairy beard, that's what I thought like, a, that's quite nice and that's uh, quite interesting. And this is uh, like the perfect imperfection uh, for me. So this was very, very uh, nice. So happy experiment, perfect imperfection. We found uh, the perfect type of wood. <laughs> and um, I started with the first uh, test print. And um, yeah, this is also, and this um, is interesting, um, 
I did, I did my first uh, test prints here and I like letterpress so much because like you, this is so black. This is the print of this. You can never achieve this on your laser printer or, or on the offset press. This is really like, like re big black, you know, it's like the first black coffee in the morning which pff, hits you in the face. It's like, it's like you're awake, you know, it's like that kind of print and that kind of color combinations I really want to, to show because it's really, I want to make some kind of typographical wake up call with coffee in your eyes or something like that. No, you're still with me? Yeah, well, and um, um, yeah, so this is, and I think, you know, the ink is still soaking wet and I, what I especially also like about letterpress is that you can, if it's really push it into the paper and it's a little bit squeezed sidewards, really enjoy this. Um, another thing which is important is that I want to say that, that I, am never, I never initiate such a uh, project because of uh, nostalgic reasons. <coughs> um, I am not interested in uh, designing uh, revivals or anything. Or I am only interested in a letterpress because it's I can learn something which I can take with me to design a project which can possibly be the typographic future. Um, I want to design the, 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 the present and the future by uh, experimenting with old or with contemporary techniques. And um, saying this, you know, I like to work uh, with my hands. I that you know I, I you know I sit uh, entire weeks behind my computer but I really like to print myself with printing uh, uh, myself but um, our studio is a very strong uh, DIY approach and we, we like to do it ourselves but we are not uh, we never initiate something because of the, the craftsmanship approach uh, of the job it's it's it's, we always think that concept is first, and then um, 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 we uh, uh, think about how we execute uh, something. Yeah, that's that's. I think this is important to to state. So um, we did three different types of wood. Uh, we didn't choose for poplar because it's it's for technical reasons because it's a little bit too soft. Uh, we didn't choose for oak because it's really something which is which goes. It's it's like an illustration of typography. Of um, and I think that type design or typography should never be. Um, um, in, in, in it should never visualize the illustration. It should be part of the concept. It should never visualize the concept. So uh, we choose for okume and mainly because of like this or with this beautiful um, structure on it. And uh, you can say like, okay, here above you see the uh, um, vectorized files and in the middle you see the letterpress files and you can say like, okay, hey Mark, where are you talking about? What I can nearly see the difference, but I think it's very important to see like um, these little scratches, these structure, uh, here, or for example with the C, I think it's very important to, um, to, to have this because it's, it's, it's the perfect imperfection according to me, you know. And again, I'm uh, inviting you to disagree with me. Um, uh, I look forward to discussion uh, and to hear your opinion. So uh, we started uh, with the production of uh, 120 24 st standardized uh, construction plate, and it was like a regular start. This was only one fourth of the production. And um, what was quite interesting is that if you sit um, behind your computer and you just can tap as many A's as you want. For letterpress, you need how many A's do you need to have like a standard set to make a proper design? You know, we had I had no idea, and so we found some references in a, uh, and it's depending on language, and we found uh, some reference in a 
letterpress uh, type specimen from a uh, lettergieterij Amsterdam uh, from 1930. Well, this is the basic digital files of the uh, structure of Bixa, Bixa color. That's the first type trace. And if you take the whole tree, so the production could start. And these, I think these are still one of the most uh, exciting uh, slides of the presentation during the lab. He's one of the, uh, he was the operator. <coughs> Changing uh, the spindle. This is halfway the project, and I don't know if you ever saw this, but it's, it's so nice to see your own typeface <laughs> appearing in uh, wood type as wood type can also be used. This was halfway uh, the project, and I uh, we took this back to our studio. We all had to polish them by hand, and um, this was. Um, regular day at our studio, and at that time we were so happy with the two interns, the two stu students uh, from Paris who did their internship at our studio, so they helped us, they had to uh, um, put a furnish on it, and so the first day of print uh, started, and this was really an exciting moment. first test prints, and I was so happy with this, you know, and I saw that there were, okay, there are lots of, um, you know, we had to play with the, oh, we had to put the pressure of the press, press um, put properly, but uh, I really enjoyed uh, these uh, prints already. So, this is quite an important slide in my opinion, because, you know, I'm from Holland, and, uh, you know, the Dutch A, it's a literature, EEA, um, it's quite an important letter uh, in our language. You know, in summertime, <laughs> we like to go swimming in, I don't know if you've ever been to Amsterdam, but there's a river uh, at A, and it's very nice uh, during summertime to have a swim there. And very close to our former studio, there was a beer brewery at A, and a very nice beer there. So it's, it, A is really an important um, um, uh, letter. We call it the 27th letter of our alphabet. And I think it's, you know, it's uh, as a type designer, you should be responsible to cover as much uh, languages as possible if you design a typeface for the uh, Latin script part of the world. And another thing which is quite uh, important to note is that um, my Output in our studio, it's, uh, it's a very well-balanced mix between client-related jobs and uh, self-initiated jobs. And, um, you know, my clients will never allow me to print something black on black paper, you know, with black ink on black paper. They will say, like, no, like depressing or things like that, but you know, it's, it's unreadable. Um, it's, uh, they will never allow me, they will never pay for it. So, but as a, uh, uh, um, if I'm initiating my own project, you can uh, do whatever you want at l as long as it fits in uh, your concept. So I'm really happy with this uh, slide. So another thing which is uh, important is that uh, a type designer designs something <coughs> And then they make a specimen for it, and they come up with something like hamburger van Sif or the quick brown fox, and jumps over whatever. You know, it's like, it's like, it's, it's, I cannot imagine that you print something like that. What doesn't mean anything, you know? It's like, I think it's, it's, it's like, you know, nonsense, you know? Don't say anything that doesn't mean anything. So, um, for this case, uh, for Bixar Color, the wood type, we thought, okay, we will uh, print a series of posters, and they will, you can see them as the type specimen for the set, for the, uh, and we will show our ideas uh, about uh, multicolored typography and typography in general. So, that's, and you can see that, okay, this is their uh, quick brown fox, whatever. 
So, and another thing, you know, when we send something to the printer, we test everything. You know, we are never, well, we used to be sometimes surprised, but nowadays we know, we know exactly what we are doing. But for um, this project, we felt like, okay, let's surprise ourselves during printing. So let's, you know, let's use uh, ink straight out of the can, unmixed, and just during printing and surprise ourselves, like, okay, oh, this combination is nice. Oh, yeah, this one is, oh, the folds are nice. You know, so it's really like a different um, way of working, of pr producing uh, something. So, and we choose a color range, uh, which is more or less uh, based or loosely inspired on the CNYK uh, color range. And uh, yeah, another thing, which is typically for letterpress, as you know, we were not we, we are not like experienced letterpress printers, as you know, already here. And um, we had no idea that when we put layer upon layer, you know, we think. You know, we always thought like, okay, this is dry in you know, an hour or something. So this, uh, every uh, poster has three layers and every layer, uh, one print run is one layer and every print run took about one uh, week to dry. And this is quite something, you know, because it's, it's like every poster took three weeks to uh, uh, produce and we never thought it was so much work. So what I'm showing here, this is, I will show you this in three uh, seconds. This is about three weeks of production. It's like this. So we thought about like, okay, it's, you know, after slow food, we can almost like introduce slow print <laughs> or something. Like, so it, after weeks and weeks and weeks of printing, this is our approach of the declaration, sorry, of the quick brown fox jumps over. This is our declaration of deconstructed typography, loosely based on the CNYK color mode, uh, all printed in uh, wood type, in uh, standard, uh, straight out of the can ink, uh, red, yellow, and blue uh, color combination. Then showing our ideas about typography. So this was the wood type part of the project. And then we thought like, okay, and now we need to, you know, we did one step back in history, almost to the time to Gutenberg. Now we need to do one step uh, back to like contemporary to today. And then we go. YK offset and we think that it's important to document your the project or the research proj projects uh, you do that you have to document them properly you know I think it's important that you share uh, your ideas or your, uh, you know, your research with other people so this is the reason why we made uh, the type root, uh, uh, type specimen and this, uh, these are all transformations of the letters uh, in, uh, in digital and vectorized uh, files. So, um, playing around with different layers and different uh, color combinations. It all transformed to uh, CNYK. and the actual size of the wood type here. So um, we thought like, okay, it's, it's important to compare like the digital files and the, <coughs> sorry, the digital uh, uh, CNYK printed files and compare them with the letterpress uh, files. So I think it's important to, to know what you are doing as a designer, as a printer. And playing around with all the different color combinations, I thought like, yeah, I really 
enjoyed it, and I think it's really interesting, all the new uh, possibilities what it's actually can uh, make with this different constructed and deconstructed uh, type. And because we are so uh, convinced about uh, this whole idea, about this whole concept, um, I collaborated with uh, Roel Nieskens, and he's a very, uh, very clever front-end developer. And we collaborated and we made the website uh, bixacolor.com because we thought, you know, we were so happy and we were so convinced about this concept that we would like to share this with uh, lots of other people, anyone who is interested. So, again, you're uh, all invited to go to the website bixacolor.com and you can play around with the color and the type combinations and you can download uh, the font for uh, free. And however, it's for you know, non-commercial use only. It's, uh, please, if you want to use this for a client, then you should buy a proper license. But uh, as a student, you know, you're all invited uh, to try this. Uh, and you can install this in your, uh, just in your creative cloud, and you can work uh, in the com color combination you made in uh, InDesign or uh, Illustrator or Photoshop. You can install it uh, there. So that's the reason why we made uh, Bixar Color, because it's also, um, it's, it will be part of the uh, possible future. And playing around with Bixa, I thought like, okay, this is quite interesting and quite uh, nice. And then I was thinking about the whole idea of constructing typefaces and deconstructing typefaces. And then I thought like, okay, if I can construct and deconstruct a typeface with color, because you know I started with one letter and then I did one word and words, two words or three words. Lots of words make sentences and sentences make paragraphs and paragraphs make uh, chapters and you know chapters can make an entire book. And <coughs> Sorry, I was interested in really the uh, the step from decoration to uh, deconstruction with type, and um, what I'm showing here is really the basics of uh, deconstruction uh, uh, of typography. And I know that there are lots of different approaches, and um, I probably will run a workshop uh, this summer. And this will be a very, uh, well, will be a part of the workshop. So how can you deconstruct a typeface with color? This is the most basic um, approach. There's also, you know, the stencil uh, typeface approach, but there's also a calligraphy uh, uh, typeface approach. So it's, it's really, there are lots of different approaches. Historic historically, there are approaches of deconstructing uh, typefaces. These are two ones, but this is the, I think this is a very interesting um, concept because you don't add any decoration to the basic shapes, shape of a character, which makes it very um, usable and probably also legible. And so <coughs> I was interested in design a typeface where Bixa color was obviously a typeface for larger sizes for yeah, size like this or even for use on posters or anything. For now I was interested in designing a typeface um, for smaller size, for body text size. And um, before I show you what I made, I have to state one thing first. In my opinion, in, in our opinion, in you know in Novo Tipo opinion, I basically don't care about legibility or readability. I think every character is legible by definition. And this is complete common sense for me. And of course, you're all invited to disagree with me. But if you know a character is it's not legible, it's not a character anymore. Yeah, it's an, it's an abstract sign, but it's like a, an A is an A. B is a B and it will always be an A and it will always be a B. Yeah? You're still with me? Because it's, it's starting to get nerdier and nerdier. And, um, 
this is complete common sense. So for this we made, with this uh, construction and deconstruction approach, we made this typeface uh, ZISA uh, for uh, smaller um, sizes, for really for body text size. And I was very happy because um, recently it was chosen as one of the most interesting uh, type releases at the Typographica website. And it, you know, it's, it's, it's very nice if you receive uh, uh, the attention of uh, uh, your work. So this became CISA. And I explained to you that we take our, uh, you know, we take ourselves not very seriously, but we take our jobs very seriously. So we uh, made a Latin version. And uh, for now, uh, Lisa Dreus, uh, I collaborate with her. She is now making a, a Cyrillic version. So it's really, you know, we really think that we can convince not only the Latin script part of the world, but we will also conquer the, um, the uh, 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 Cyrillic uh, 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 scripts part of the world. So Russia will be on our feet, hopefully within some years. So, but we, we think it's important to um, yeah, design for as many people as possible. So I explained to you that we normally test everything. And uh, this is the first uh, design text for the Novel Hippo Color Book, a book we were starting to, um, we wanted to design showing uh, new ideas about color and type. And, but then I thought like, okay, if I need to make, um, if I need to take this one step further, I need to do some proper testing and I need to do some proper research because it's like I want to, I'm not interested and I don't think you either, that you're, you're not interested in your own personal taste. You know like, okay, you know, I like blue and I like Red, let's make a typeface con containing like red and blue. It's not interesting. You should take this one step further and embed your uh, research in some kind of some, some kind of frame. And um, so I made some color wheels and I did some experimenting with all different types of color combinations. And I also started to do some research in uh, proper uh, color theories. And I am, was, at that time I was very interested in the, how color was names. And you know, we are all working now with industrialized uh, color combinations, like PMS, PMY, PMA, uh, RGB, uh, color, things like that. But before that, how, how did we work with color? So this is quite interesting. and. Um, Series of Yo uh, Joseph Alba, uh, and I uh, some historical research. Goethe is very uh, nice. He's totally wrong, but uh, it's very interesting to uh, read about. And uh, Joseph is very interesting. And there's like uh, uh, Alba's is nice, and I very interested in Itte. And I did some research with the Michel scholarship. Itte, uh, you know, he was one of my favorite uh, color theorists. Uh, and what I was trying to do is that I am, you know, go beyond my own personal taste and try to transform and translate the uh, ideas of Itte uh, into typography. He designed or he stated that there are seven types uh, of color uh, theories and uh, the contrast of UE, light and dark, cold and warm. I think this is part of uh, like very basic uh, uh, color education. But um, he made them for um, visual arts. And what I did is I translated them or transformed them to typography. And this, you know, this gives me some kind of framework for which goes beyond my own personal taste. And um, 
Well, I think it's a very beautiful uh, perspective. Yeah. But it's like, it's up to you, you know. Again, you're invited to uh, disagree with me. And um, what I notice is that every research project, you know, comes with new questions. For example, uh, what is happening with the patterning of uh, bodies that only use different colored parts? I warned you, it's, it's, it's nerdy, yeah? So it's like, still, I hope that you're still uh, awake there. I think that uh, color uh, can also be very um, interesting if you want to use it for optical corrections within the basic shapes of a character. Like normally a typeface designer doing all kinds of visual tricks uh, to make the, 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 the shape look uh, right. And I think that layering with different colored parts um, can be extremely, extremely valuable for this. So, there's a lot of research uh, to do, I think. So, um, um, there are three types of parameters, which is part of like the fundamental cornerstones of your multicolored type design. The first one is font, font points are the type of text. It's exactly the same of, um, uh, as a normal, uh, non-chromatic, like a black and white uh, typeface. Now, for example, you, 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 it's, it's like you do something else with a heading, then you do something, then you do with the typeface of a body text. And um, again, this is something else. This is the other cornerstone, this is the second one. It's what is happening with, um, when you divide a, you have high contrast and low contrast, characters and what is happening when you uh, deconstruct them and how do you reconstruct these typefaces. So this is um, one of the, the fundamental cornerstones of your multicolor type design. Doesn't care if it's a poster or the actual type design, this is uh, fundamental. And then you get examples like this. And I think it's very nice if you mix like the deconstruction part of a high contrast typeface and you mix the deconstructed part of a low contrast typeface and well, then it's like ecstasy almost, uh, typography. And <coughs> you will get uh, examples like this. And the last one, it's all depending on the surface of your, uh, or the color of your background. It goes without saying that yellow and orange, it's very uh, difficult to read if you compare it with purple and blue. And so the contrasting color, it's another fundamental cornerstone of your typeface. So doing all this research, uh, I thought like, okay, now I want to, you know, I'm a graphic designer, now I want to use it and I want to show, I want to actually prove that I am right with all my research. I want to, yeah, I want to see it, uh, if it works. So I want to translate and transform my ideas. I want to use them in an editorial context. So I show you a few examples, like um, as a, as a you know, one of the basic things of a graphic designer, your basic task is to organize information. You, um, you know, you, you give hierarchies to a text. And, you know, it's like, okay, you, you think of more important uh, ones, you make them a little bit bigger. And within a body text, you can use um, more or less like two ways of um, emphasizing a certain part of text. And then you can like, because the, the, your um, the regular type designer, he's providing a standard set with a Roman typeface, an italic typeface, a bold and a bold italic typeface. What I'm trying to say is that wouldn't it be interesting if you can use like the multicolored typeface, uh, uh, so the multicolored uh, variant of a typeface. And you will get examples like this. 
And I think it will take some time, maybe 100 years, but um, um, I think that, um, that you can use type uh, color, multicolor typography in an editorial context to emphasize a certain part of text and to give hierarchies to text. And again, you're invited to disagree with me. But I think that you know, it will take some time and we will need to get used to it. But I think that you know, your grandchildren will come to you and they will say like, no, granddad or grandma, tell us, you know, tell us about the time that color was only in black and white only, you know, it's like, I think it will, I think it will happen. I think, well, maybe not me for everywhere, but you know, I'm old already, but um, you will, as students, you will, um, you will uh, notice it. So color will be the new bolt. And it's already happening in our studio. And I will show you now, because you know, this was not like a regular portfolio presentation. <coughs> I will show you now some examples from our portfolio where we kind of prove that color is the new bold and color is the new italic. And part of them are self-initiated and part of them are a mix of self-initiated jobs and client-related jobs and other ones are typically client-related jobs. I chose uh, four of them. So this is uh, the first publication about the subject. Uh, uh, Gerard Unger wrote the preface. Um, I did the, the design and the, uh, and the text. And um, this is uh, like proving and stating. And uh, this is more or less like the manifesto of uh, multicolored typography. And Can I use the, the theories, the, the translation of the, the theories of Johannes Itten to uh, make my point? And I'm explaining how deconstruction and construction will mix those different ones. I'm trying to reintroduce uh, as a type designer and as an editorial designer those beautiful paragraph section sign uh, marks. Because, you know, I think that, like, well, it's a little bit provocative, provocative to say, but I think that modernism did a lot of harm to beautiful typography. Again, you're invited to disagree with me. Well, part of the letterpress, uh, sorry, part of the novel Typo Color book was printed in letterpress. And, um, Oh, yeah, it was it's quite funny to uh, explain that Gerard Unger wrote the, uh, the preface and I was um, a little bit like a fight with the publisher who said like, okay, whatever you want, you know, but Gerard Unger, he is, or he was, yeah, but he still is like a very uh, big name in type design and, um, you know, please put his words, put it in black, you know, where people will, that people can actually read it, you know. And I thought, like, no, you know, I'm completely, like, you know, go away from my own point of view if I... So we found each other somewhere in the middle, you know, the, the real preface is uh, printed in full color, in multicolor, but on the back there is, uh, and this is the only black used in the book. And again, there's the uh, barcode for the distribution of the book, uh, print. but this is the only black, the rest is all printed to free, um, uh, sorry, free Pantone. Uh, so, uh, yeah, of course, you know, it's, it's so nice when you receive a lot of attention and a lot of nice prizes, you know. And uh, it's, it's also opening other doors to uh, new projects where you can show what you want and what you can do with your uh, ideas. So this is a book we uh, designed for the Flemish opera, um, completely in uh, CNY with all the different types com type combinations. For this, we use um, all different color combinations, but really for the hierarchy and for the navigation uh, through uh, the different uh, text. So, and this is a design we made for the uh, Pekin conference uh, in the three major museums in Amsterdam. 
And um, this is the design for an identity for a conference. And uh, I think that a well-designed uh, typeface, a bespoke typeface, can easily, in combination with a color combination, with a, with, sorry, in combination with two colors, can easily replace uh, or can easily be the fundamental cornerstones of an entire identity. I think that that uh, the, the logos are really these times are a little bit over in a way that the logo is a very static thing. A typeface it's much more open for communication and it's much more uh, it's more like a dialogue with um, the one who is reading where a logo is really like a monologue it's static against dynamic like a dynamic uh, typeface and for this identity we uh, replaced the three a's which are um, sorry for the three crosses which are part of the, um, the, uh, the more or less like the, the, the weapon of Amsterdam, the heraldry of Amsterdam. So we use the three crosses, we replace the Stedelijk Museum. This one was for the Stedelijk Museum van Gogh and het Rijksmuseum. I think this is a, a very strong identity with no logo, where a typeface is more or less the logo with color. And, well, again, you know, I showed you this one, and this one is important in our, uh, in our language. So, it's, it's flexible, it's, it's open, it's, it's not closed. So, this is the last one recently published uh, the type and color but this is the English version type and color the German call uh, is named uh, titled color and type interesting you know it's a very German approach and a very American approach and I personally like you know the American design I, I did both in myself but you know I had to work for two Publishers. And both were convinced that, yeah, I know the market and I know what I'm doing. Okay, but this is like um, content is the same. And this is like if you compare it with the Novo Tipo Color Book and this book, like the Novo Tipo Color Book is more like the, the manifesto of multicolor typography. This, I'm trying to hit you in the face and um, explain to you with bold statements like color is the new bold and color will be the new italic and with this book I'm trying to show you <coughs> what hits you in the face and how it hits you in the face and um, also uh, if you want to hit someone yourself in the face you know with multicolor typography I explain you what you should do and how you should do it and how it works and what is deconstruction and what is construction and, and um, these color combinations are much more subtle and much more, probably much more legible. Um, uh, I explain everything, different types of color chips. And um, what is happening with the sizing in different color combinations. It's really like the eyes mixing. Um, Ten or twelve point size. So what I noticed that I was working on that book and I was was ready for publishing. And then I thought like, okay, this is all quite interesting, but I noticed that uh, my uh, that the, the, the theories of Johannes Itten, which I liked so much, they were not quite adequate uh, anymore for the transformation to type design. So um, I was interested in, as a designer, to make it completely on my own. I wanted to be in control of everything. So I thought like, okay, if I want to be in control of everything, I need to know what I'm doing. So uh, 
are working a lot as a uh, analog designer. So I work a lot with paper and I work a lot with ink. So what I'm doing here, I want to try to make my own paper and I want to try to make my own ink just to understand what I'm doing. At the same time, I was interested in Novo Tipo as a self-sufficient uh, design office in a way like, okay, would it be possible if a designer recycles his own designs? And this is really what is happening now and it's, um, yeah, it's still a work in progress. So what I did is I collect the, all the printed leftovers, which we, normally the printer throws them away. I collect them, took them back to my studio, and there is like one pallet of leftovers from the type and color. This is the front of my studio in Amsterdam, and uh, I collect them. And uh, like every new project is like always that you uh, Part of that, like 50% of every new pr project, is something you already know or something you already learned. And 50% uh, is something new. So I thought like, okay, if I want to make a paper, new paper, then I take like 50% old from old printed leftovers. And as we all know that, print, that paper is made out of uh, wood. And then I will uh, put new things in it. So I collected uh, sawdust from uh, the Amsterdam uh, poplar trees and I mix it with uh, the wood pulp, sorry, yeah, the wood pulp of, I cook it first and I mix it with the, the paper pulp of the old uh, leftovers. And I try to make, well, just uh, try to make it a new paper of it. So this is really like dining in process, you know, it's really about, uh, I don't care how it eventually looks like, but it's like the process of the, the process is part of the design. And that's why I'm, I'm trying to um, document everything also properly. So, this is my first experiment of making new paper, partly old and partly new ingredients. What I especially like is that you can actually see where, uh, what is your old projects like. This is a very small piece of paper from um, the type of color. Uh, At the same time, I thought like, okay, if I, you know, I make my own letters, I write my own books, uh, I make my own paper, then I also should be able to, to make my own ink. And for this part of the project, I collaborate with uh, the Painting Plants uh, project. It's a garden in the middle of Amsterdam, and they grow beautiful plants on which they extract uh, pigment uh, from. So, based on blue, yellow, and red, indigo, uh, safflower, and leather. And I try to make this to, into ink, and you now I'm doing like nice uh, experiments in my kitchen and trying to think, you know, I have no idea. Eventually I'm trying to make like the Novo Tipo way of making my own industrial system. Like I'm, I want to make my own Pantone system. I want to make my own uh, CMYK system. Doing this is still going on. I'm still uh, experimenting. So here I'm making experiments with pigskin. And I'm trying to. What I'm trying here is that I'm trying to make my own contrast system for typography with when I'm in control of everything. Oh, this was uh, also the project. I made a small exhibition. And again, if you, you know, you can make your own paper, you can make your own ink, but then you also should make your own um, uh, sizing system. 
because I'm not, you know, when I'm making my own paper, I should not be make it like an A size or an you all know that it's like DIN A4 or DIN A3. It's like, then I want to make my Novo Tipo sizing system, I think. So um, I am trying to find my own or to construct my own um, sizing system, which makes it like totally uh, perfect. Here. So again, this is. and showing with different uh, color combinations and with different paper combinations. So, but it's still going on, ongoing. You're, you know, I share almost everything I do. Uh, you're invited to follow it via the hashtag Novo Tipo of Grid. And, you know, every failure, everything will be, uh, I will show you there. It's really design design, it's, it's really the process is part of the, is the design more or less. So meanwhile, we are almost here. Um, we are uh, experiencing like the new dawn of a era. I think uh, you're invited to uh, use color for everything, you know, you can d use it for navigating through text or just uh, for beauty. So I think that every presentation should, should end with a proper uh, conclusion. I think that type designers should think in C and Y and not K uh, necessarily. So, um, you know, this is like a commercial moment for me. <laughs> like, you know, it's everything if you want to, uh, trying to make some money here, uh, all for sale uh, at, uh, through my uh, web shop. Happy to sign it and to send it uh, over to uh, Barcelona to you. You can order it uh, all online. Uh, Novel Tipo Color Book and Type Color are in English, so uh, there's no Spanish version yet, unfortunately. Um, there's a very beautiful uh, CISA left cast by uh, Lettergieterij des Saan. Um, it's really, it's a very nice job. And it's, um, it's quite a challenge for a letterpress printer to make the registration good, but it's, it's, I think it's, it's possible, and I think it's, it's really, really nice, you know. Um, you're invited to come over to Amsterdam and to play around. Uh, the Bixa Woodtype and Sisa Letta, they're both Etigraafs uh, uh, Werkcentrum in Amsterdam, and they do workshops here. I will run a letterpress workshop in March, so you're all invited to come over to Amsterdam. Um, Many thanks to, yes, sorry, to Gutenberg Museum, Nick Sherman, Stefan Kohls, Letter from Archive, and David Wolski for the beautiful um, uh, type specimen which I showed you at the beginning of the presentation. And I thank you very much for the attention uh, of this nearly presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Alguien, eh, una pregunta, some questions. Hi. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to ask you if you consider uh, designing types as an art. No, no, no. <laughs> no I don't think so. No, no. I think that. Um, well. I, you know, that's a tough question. But it's, I think, like, <laughs> if I take it personal, then, um, you know, I don't see myself as an artist. You know, it's really, I see myself like a designer, and I think that's really a difference between art and design. And I think um, that um, it's all about readability and legibility within type design. And an artist shouldn't care about readability, he's totally free. And it's a little bit what I explained about an A is an A and a B is a B and it will always be an A and it will always stay a B, you know, that's what I mean. And that's why I'm a designer and I'm not an artist. So I design, no. 
And I don't think that it's that a type designer should think about himself as an artist. Yeah. Does this answer your question? Yeah, yeah, but I just um, thought that you say that for you, uh, designing types is beautiful when it's like um, ugly, uh, well, imperfect. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, I think that the one thing that is really great in art is that uh, every piece is unique and imperfect. So I just. Art? Yeah. Ah, okay, but it's. Maybe I misunderstand you. Um. I, I just uh, say that because I think that, uh, well, as I said, uh, for me, art is beautiful because it's imperfect. And you cannot um, repeat exactly a same artwork. Ah, that way. Yeah. And, you, and you just talk about um, like creating types uh, imperfectly. And, mm -hmm. that, and that was beautiful about the type. That ah. it was unique, so I just thought. Oh, OK, <laughs> oh, that way, yeah. yeah. Oh, beauty, then, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a whole new discussion, then. Yeah, thank you. Well, first of all, thanks for your lecture. It was very interesting. And <clears throat> my question is, in your process, um, I have noticed that you have like plenty of variables, options, combining options. How do you manage to stop yourself from getting lost on the process and mm. take like decision time? That's a very interesting question. And that's why I choose to, uh, for example, for all the color combinations, that's why I choose to work uh, especially within the, I'll call it like a framework or call it a grid of the theories of Johannes Itten. You know, I thought like, oh, I can do anything with type and color now, but I really need to, you know, put, put the lines, put the borders of my, put it in a, some kind of framework, you know, and that's, so I, I'm always open for uh, when I come with, when I see some like challenges, or problems, whatever you call it, then I'm open for, okay, how did another artist deal with that problem? Or what is happening here? Do you know what I mean? So that's, that's um, that was for example, like the, the color uh, part of the research, yeah. And this really prevented me from getting lost. Never, you, you think everything is beautiful or nothing is beautiful now. You, know? you can easily be lost. So that's choose a framework. That's that will help you. Yeah, for me at least. Uh, yeah. That's that's also the reason why I work. I like to work as a as a type designer. You know, really in restrict, restricted area, and that's 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 already a framework. Or a framework within a framework within a framework. So that makes me very happy. <laughs> yeah. Questions, más preguntas. Don't forget to come uh, this summer. Then, if you're interested, and if you're, you think you can handle uh, uh, even more of this, you know, if you go like more nerdy, nerdy, nerdy insights uh, information, then uh, it will take one week. One week. One week and, um, what would be interesting if you uh, well if you attend that we that you will make like a like a basic multicolored typeface uh, yourself uh, designing your own type system designing your own color system that will be the goal of that uh, workshop. So, um. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.